Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at a CPA exam simulation or an exercise that will help us compute basic and diluted earnings per share. We have Adam, has had revenue of 19,500, expenses other than interest and taxes of 10,420 X1. In the prior year, 20 X0, Adam issued 60 at par 1,008% bonds, each convertible into 100 shares of common stock. 60 means we have 60 bonds. At par, it means they were issued at par. Each bond for $1,000, so 60 times 1,000 is the amount of money we have outstanding. And this bond is paying 8% in interest. Now, each one of these bonds is convertible into 100 shares of common stock. So, so these are what we call convertible bonds. And because we have convertible bonds, we might have to compute diluted earnings per share. Now we might, we have to compute potential diluted earnings per share. Assuming in X1, 2,000 shares were outstanding of common stock, none of the bonds was converted or redeemed, and assume a 20% tax, tax rate. We're going to compute diluted earnings per share, then we're going to look at various scenarios of this exercise. Let's go ahead and get started by computing basic and diluted for the first scenario. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Let's start by completing net income. To, to complete basic earnings per share, it's net income minus preferred dividend, if any, divided by common stock or the average number of common stock outstanding. This is the basic formula. Now we don't have net income, we have common stock, we don't have preferred stock, which is good. So we don't have a preferred dividend. So we need to compute a, an income statement. We start with revenues. Revenues 19,000 minus expenses other than interest and, interest and taxes will give us income before interest and taxes. We call this EBIT, 9,100. Then we will deduct interest. How much is interest? 60 bonds, each is $1,000 times 8%. We have interest expense of 4,800. Simply put, we have 60,000 of bonds and we're paying 8%. So 9,100 minus the interest of 4,800 will give us income before taxes or EBIT of 4,300. Then we compute the taxes, 20% tax rate, 4,300 times 20% equal to $860 in taxes. EBIT minus the taxes, EBIT, not EBIT, EBIT minus the taxes will give us net income of 3,400. Now we have net income. Let's compute basic earnings per share. It's net income divided by the shares outstanding and the basic earnings per share, if my math is right, is $1.72. Now we need to compute diluted earnings per share. When we compute diluted earnings per share, we need to make adjustments to the numerator. We need to make adjustments to the denominator. What adjustments do we need to make? In the numerator, we're going to start with net income. Then we are going to add interest net of taxes. What does that mean? It means we have to assume that those share, those bonds, those 1,000 bonds were converted. If they were converted, we don't have to pay 4,800. True. That's the good news. So the good news is we will save 4,000. This is saving plus in taxes. However, once we save 4,800 in taxes, I'm sorry, in interest, in interest, 4,800 in interest. Once we save 4,800 in interest, then we're going to lose, I'm going to change colors, we're going to lose the tax deductibility. We are going to lose the tax deductibility of this amount. How do we compute the tax deductibility? Well, 4,800, we multiply it by one minus the tax rate. So the 4,800, what we have to do, let me pull my calculator here. We're going to take 4,800 times 0.8, 
and that's going to give us 3840 3840 therefore we need to add the interest times 1 minus 0.2 which I said it will be three thousand eight hundred and forty dollars therefore to the numerator we will add interest net of taxes yes we save the interest but we lose on the taxes specifically how much do we lose on the taxes let me show you specifically how much four thousand eight hundred times twenty percent let's see how much that is if we take four thousand eight hundred times 0.2 we lost nine hundred and sixty dollars so notice four thousand eight hundred minus 960 if my math is right it should be three thousand eight hundred and forty so this is interest net of taxes now to the denominator what do we have to add to the denominator we have two thousand shares originally and if we took 100 shares 100 shares no not 100 shares if we take if we took 60 bonds times each one is converted into 100 shares we need to add an additional 600 shares therefore we add 6,000 to the bottom now we can compute the numerator which is this is the numerator and this is the denominator this is the denominator therefore the diluted earnings per share is 91 pennies it is diluted because it went down the earnings per share went down therefore it's diluted let's change the scenario a little bit assume the same fact as in part a the first part except that the 60 shares were issued september 1st 20x1 rather in 20x0 and none of them were converted or redeemed what does that mean in 20x1 the bonds were issued september 1st not they were not issues they were not issued as of the beginning of the year so this is December January 1st this is December 31st what does that mean it means if that's the case we only have interest for September October November and December let's compute the net income we have revenues minus expenses will give us income before interest and taxes our interest now is 60 60 bonds times 1000 60000 of bonds times 8% times 1 times 1 1 fourth 1 fourth oh, I'm sorry not 1 fourth 1 third 1 third let's compute the interest it is 1660 bonds times one thousand dollar per bond times eight percent times october september october november and december four divided by twelve we have to prorate therefore the interest is one thousand six hundred nine thousand one hundred minus one thousand six hundred is seven thousand five hundred then we're going to compute the taxes seven thousand five hundred times twenty percent we have to pay in taxes one thousand five hundred then we'll take earnings before taxes minus the taxes of 1500 we have a net income of 6000 now we compute dilute let's we can compute diluted if we want we can compute basic 6000 divided by 2000 is three dollars the basic earnings per share dilute. let's compute the diluted we're going to take the net income that we computed plus 1600 times the 1600 is interest then we have to convert it net of tax we multiply it by 0.8 divide by 2000 shares plus remember if we convert those 60 bonds they will convert into 6000 shares however since the bonds were issued September we have to prorate therefore we have to only multiply by 412 which is for September October November and December and when we do this computation we're gonna have diluted earnings per share of one dollar and 82 cent obviously went from three dollars to 182 it is dilutive assume the same fact except that 20 of the 60 shares were actually converted on july 1st compute diluted earnings per share can you find the answer for this question i hope you can it's going to be the same as in the first problem why because 20 uh, 20 were actually 
20 were actually converted. What do we assume the other 40? We assume the other 40 are also converted as well. Why? Because we assume everything is converted as of the beginning of the year, the 40 and the 20 were actually converted. Let's look at the computation nevertheless. Revenue minus expenses other than taxes and interest equal to 9,100. Now we have the interest. We have at the first half of the year, we had all the bonds outstanding times 8% times one half. So this is the interest expense from January 1st till mid-year, which was July 1st. Then from July 1st, we had 40 bonds because remember 20 were converted times 1,000 bond times 1,000 per bond is 40,000 times 8% times half a year. And this is the interest from July 2nd till December 31st. Now let's compute earnings before taxes, which is 9,100 minus the interest will give us earnings before taxes of 5,100. Let's compute the taxes 5,100 times 20%. Let's compute net income 5,100 minus the taxes will give us net income of 4,080. Now if we want to compute basic, it's 4,080 divided by 2,000 and this will be the basic EPS. How about the dilutive? Well, what we're going to do, we're going to take $4,080, then add to it interest net of taxes. What's interest net of taxes? $4,000. What's that $4,000 coming from? It's the $2,100 plus the $1,600, but we have to add it to the numerator net of tax because once we add the interest, we lose the tax effect. Therefore, it's, it's a little bit less. It's 80% of that. Therefore, interest net of tax, what's 80% is 3,200, okay? Then, then in the, num in the denominator, we're gonna have the 2,000 shares originally. Then we're gonna have the 2,000 shares prorated for the first quarter, plus the 4,000 converted, plus the 1,000 prorated for the second one. So all in all, what's gonna happen is we have 6,000 outstanding. Uh, 6,000 added, 6, 000, not outstanding, we're going to have 6,000 shares added, 6,000 shares added. What, what does that 6,000 represent? It's the 60 bonds times 100. Some of them were actually converted. The one that are not converted, we assume they are converted. Therefore, they are all converted. Therefore, we'll back to the first scenario, scenario A, where diluted earnings per share is 91 cent because we assume all of them are converted. Whether they are converted or not, the converted one, excellent, they are converted. The unconverted, we convert them. Once we convert them, we convert everything. That's why the answer is the same to the first question. What, what do I mean the same? The same is if we go back to the first scenario here, the diluted was 0.91 because we end up with 8,000 shares in the denominator. What should you do now? If you're studying for your CPA exam, you want to go to Farhat lectures, look at additional lectures, MCQs, true, false, exercises. That's going to help you with a topic like earnings per share. Invest in yourself. Earnings per share is an important topic. Good luck. Study hard. Farhat is always here for you and stay safe.